Hello, Weavers. I've got a special announcement for you. We're starting a second feed. Our new feed is going to be called Patchwork. And it is going to contain all of the little side stories that we couldn't help but tell, but didn't want to get, dis but didn't want to get distracted by on the main feed. Here is a sample patchwork taking place in the middle of I'm Sorry Did You Say Street Magic, involving the terror attack that we mentioned. If you want more Game Woven, or if you want some side content, or if you want to see if we did a little side story, feel free to hop over to the Patchwork, a Game Woven production feed, and check that out too. We've also got some special guest episodes coming up, so make sure you follow it. Welcome to Patchwork, a Game Woven production. When we want to follow up on an interesting character or event in the Game Woven world, but don't want to get too distracted from the main storyline, we branch off and post those recordings here. Like Game Woven, each of these sessions takes place in the Game Woven world and further fleshes out the setting through play. We hope you enjoy. In this episode of Patchwork, myself, Lex, Emily, Rob, and Zad, all from the main cast, run a session of This is a Game About Fishing. This session takes place in the middle of our Streets of Magic arc. If you recall, we alluded at the end of the first compass about a terror attack that destroyed a few factories. Well, look no further, because this is the terror attack. It's fun, it's goofy, I play a dog. Yeah, we're, we're gonna, I'm gonna bring my laptop with me. We're all gonna hit the watering hole. I've got... <laughs> hey, it's pretty nice out. <clears throat> Hello, and welcome to Game Woven. For this episode, we take you far, far away from the Undying Empire, up to the northwest corner of the entire continent, in a kingdom called Tarsig where the forces of mercantilism and monarchy have subsumed the mysteries of magic into purchasable trinkets. Massive factories construct these trinkets, poisoning the waters and keeping people in horrible working conditions. But what's worse is they're killing all of the fish, every single one of them. And who, yes, who can save the fish but a bunch of queer people who really love fish a lot? That's right. This is a game about fishing. A queer eco punk belonging outside belonging game by Riverhouse Games. This is a game about fishing is ostensibly queer. Explicitly. Yeah. Hey, I didn't even know that. Now I'm more interested. Yeah. It is a very be gay do crime. This is a game about fishing. You're going to play some queer fisher folk in a world that has faced ecological apocalypse. The world in which you live is doing all right, I guess. People get by, although some people have it much better than others. Much, much better. The folks in charge of destroying the world have names and addresses, and this game encourages you to take back a little bit of the environment from them. This is also a game about shitposting, about stretching the limits of credulity, and about how the absurd can offer shelter to those in need. When your world is inches from collapse, it can be difficult to keep your head above water. The power of absurd humor is that it highlights how absurd the serious is. This game is not a pipe, but you should wield it like one to fight depression away. Be silly, be weird, be gay, do, do crime. Those are the words from the text. That is from the text. <laughs> hey, so um, I'm coming into this game entirely blind, and the more you talk about it, the more excited I am. I'm... <laughs> You've heard me say the phrase weaponizer whimsy more than once. Oh, we're weaponizing the shit out of our women. This is where I live. Let's do it, yeah. baby. Rob, would you like to elucidate a little bit more on Tarsig? Yeah, my vision is because you said the word mountain and then my mind said caldera. So Ooh. I'm imagining a like very inactive giant caldera, which filled with water and became a massive lake. The caldera is the part of the volcano where the lava would come out. Really, this is giving in my head a real like Pokemon village vibe where it's just like, why would you build your village around <laughs> an active volcano in the lake that formed in it? Just because that's the vibe. 
but it feels like to me that the the because it's this lake is not just like a lake it's in like a cool volcano caldera and has all kinds of stuff it's got magical properties and that's part of the reason why they use the water in the factories um and they like and then they're polluting it and, and doing all that other stuff but i'm, I'm yeah. imagining very like yeah oil rig gantry vibes like it's a the city is just a big circle it's not like a big dense thing it's just this giant like gross brawling thing that's like grown around the caldera like like leeching off of it hell yeah oof i think there's probably villages that dot sort of the outside of the volcano mm. as well and so people have to like walk up hills both ways to like get to the city to go to work for their back in my jobs. day back in my day 100 percent. a lot of those villages have begun to get abandoned because they are like giant like now like downward rivers of the like toxic yeah. sludge from oh, yeah. the factories so like every every like 10 years another village has to just like move somewhere else because the a tributary of sludge has like come off mm. and i think this 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 specific caldera like feeds several other tributaries that hit the water system and so yeah. like tarsig is like poisoning a, a pretty large area and i also would love it if the volcano was at the edge next to the ocean so that we could get, yeah. get some thick ass like crashing fjords yes 100 percent. like the cascades in uh oregon Hey, hey, Ben. What's a what's a fjord? A fjord is a giant cliff next to the ocean. Okay, cool. So what we're gonna do is we've kind of got our setting now. Remember, so eco punk implies modernness. We are mm -hmm. still in fantasy. So all of this, all of this industrial waste is fantasy industrial waste. <laughs> Make that of what you. No, they, they, they. You can be wasteful in in the yeah. fantasy worlds, like yeah, you know, tanning. Chem there's chemicals in these processes. Mm -hmm. I think the funnest thing that that Zad came up with was that one of the big things is in Tarsig, there is magic, but it is not okay to cast magic spells. Yes, it is a, a deeply held cultural taboo. I think within the city, it is actually illegal to do the traditional thing of basically DIY, drawing on the powers of the world or something that is within yourself in order to produce the kinds of magical effects that we've been seeing this whole time. Instead, what they do, what's been mandated, is that all supernatural and magical effects must be channeled through some sort of manufactured good. So that's what a lot of these factories are producing is like magical trinkets. And the magical trinkets are uh, indicative of the spell that they cast. If you need a lock, if you need to do like uh, the knock spell in D and D, you have like a little portable keyhole with a with a spike on the end, and you drive it into the door, and then you stick your magical key in, and you turn the lock, and that unlocks the door. But you can't just like have a magic wand, tap the door, and the door comes unlocked. So that's a setting element and a thing that they need to produce in mass. It's their major export. They ship these things all around. And that's where all of the money comes from. Weirdly, the most sold project product is the equivalent of a like prestidigitation spell in 5e, a, a like cleaning or like <laughs> convenience spell. I don't Yeah, that's, that's probably not related, but you know. Yeah, that has nothing to do with the sludge. Moxie clean. <laughs> yeah, it'll it'll clean the dust, but it won't clean like sludge or like really nasty stuff. Yeah, no, the, the most you can do is displace sludge. Like it, it, it can't get rid of the sludge. It can move only move it around. It to a different place. You can take a <laughs> one foot square of sludge and move it and a one foot square over. Unfortunately, you can only have one square foot of sludge in a square foot space, so the, you uh -huh. can't stack them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I'm stacking. Does not exist. So you're, you're just moving it to a clear space. Hey, none of this is important. I thought it was a good goof. <laughs> you just brush it all into the sludge tributaries that take it down the mountain and problem yeah. solved. Wow. One square foot at a time. Yeah, that's the problem. Like, they, a lot, a lot of magical research has gone into it. There is 
to to current knowledge, no way to magically destroy the sludge. Why don't we get into some playbooks? So each yeah. one, uh, we're, we're all going to be playing characters because it's a game where you play a character. <laughs> and uh, each one of the characters have playbooks. Now, for those of you who are not familiar with belonging outside belonging, the core mechanic is that each of the playbooks have prompts. And then in play, if our respective prompt comes up, then we answer that prompt. You'll see in play, but it's basically like you sort of program your, your character's playbook on the fly a little bit. There are no dice. There is no GM. It's just all goof em ups and silly activities involving aquatic life. Who would like to introduce their playbook first? Hell yeah. I'm the weirdo. <laughs> Every living thing creates an impression on the world. Every action has an equal and opposite reaction. To hunt a species to extinction is not logical. You can see the scales of the ghosts at night when you dream, and you hear the splash of spectral tales on the waters of reality. They all think you're weird, but you know that ghosts are real. They don't know yet the power you can pull from the dead, but they will. Holy shit! <laughs> yeah. Fish, ghost, fish, ghost, fish, fish ghost, fish, ghost, ghost, fish, ghost, 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 fish, ghost, fish, ghost. For my look, I'm going to go with eager and exhausted. But for my character, uh, I'll also go for eager and exhausted. <laughs> <laughs> for clothes, I love an old duster. And then, so this is a classic staple of a lot of more rules like games where it's you have and then choose three. And I've been sitting here trying to find what three I have to limit myself to. So I'm going to say I have these three things. I have a pet rodent. I have someone after me. And I have someone else's teeth. Oh, my God. <laughs> and I want to make, make it very clear. Those are two different someone's. I do not have that, the person that is not their after teeth. me's teeth. No. <laughs> Those are two very different human beings. Oh my god, you also have a ghost haunting you that takes the form of a barracuda. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and that's, I don't have a, tr be, just because I'm playing the weirdo, I have to have a ghost haunting me that takes the form of a barracuda. Even if a barracuda does not make sense in the aquatic ecosystem, it is a barracuda. That's in there. Here's yep. the problem, actually. This barracuda is very chatty. Okay, so I've gotten, a, I've gotten the whole backstory of this barracuda. It, I don't know, it doesn't even know how it got in there. But the problem is, because it was killed by the pollution in the caldera, it technically counts as an extinct, a, a species being, going extinct within the caldera. <laughs> so it's, it's real pissed. Like, yeah, one out of one got killed, but that's still 100% mortality rate. That's technically an extension. Oh, oh my God. Rob, did you just imply that the caldera has a weird effect where like if the last of something dies in the caldera, it haunts the caldera forever? That's what the barracuda is telling me. <laughs> <laughs> Can I trust that barracuda? Fuck if I know. But it sure has to sure does say some compelling things. The weirdo has three prompt questions. Who taught you how to see ghosts? No one. I just started seeing them and I can't stop. <laughs> Outstanding. Excellent. I close my eyes and the ghosts are still there. Ooh. Oh. That's awesome. I don't like that. Light doesn't matter to ghosts. ghosts. If I close yeah. my eyes, they're still there. It's a if I go to sleep, I'm no longer conscious, so I don't perceive them, but I'm sure they're still there and I could still see them. Yeah, it brings a new meaning to like the floaters mm -hmm. in your in your mm -hmm. eyes. And there's a lot of them because they're fish. Yeah. <laughs> Rob, what calming ritual do you do every day? I'm trying to teach my rat how to compete in those dog <laughs> events. You know, where like you have the dog that jump through the hoops. And mm -hmm. I don't want them to. I'm trying to make it so that they can compete at the dog level. <laughs> okay. we're not there yet but they've got ambition and i think they ha i i see something like i think they could take it all the way 
And finally, why do animals flock to you? Well, first of all, my rat definitely is like, yeah, you can trust this guy. Because That's good PR from the rat. How does your rat do that? Word of mouth. <laughs> I don't know. I don't, do you speak rat? I don't. But also, I am. I do for A, constantly smell like dead fish, and B, constantly have random bits of semi-edible detritus that animals don't care. They'll eat it, so. Gross. <laughs> Yeah, hey, you asked the question. I, di- I didn't ask the question. This is a game about fishing. Ask the question. <laughs> Rob, what's the character's name? I don't think we ever got name and pronouns. That's a great question. I'm going to say Bell. B-E-L. Who would like to go next, introducing their playbook? I'm playing the crafter. Ooh, the crafter. Ooh. Tell us about the crafter. You've got tools for everything. If you don't, you know just what you need to make it work. You tinker and toy with everything, and honestly, who cares if you can't put it back together, because mostly the experience is just taking it apart, right? Run-on sentences are your thing. Your hobby is expensive, and sometimes you gotta rub two nickels together to make three, but that's just how it goes, man. All right, (laughs) keep her going. For my look, I'm gonna go with geared and grimy. Yeah. My clothes overly pocketed vest for sure excellent when you say geared and grimy is it gear in the you've got lots of stuff or is it the more like steampunk literal your stuff has gears i think i just have bags of gears in case of emergency gotcha i have to choose three and this one's pretty easy i have mold i'm gonna have lots of mold i don't know what i'm gonna do with it i need mold nice I saw it as an you option. You never know when you're going <laughs> And I just had to pick mole. The right tool for every job. Ooh. Oof. And I'm going to take a tiny drone that follows you around. <laughs> but it's like a taxidermied squid I turned into a drone. Like a weird magic, like, flying taxidermied squid? Yeah. Okay. That's not creepy. Excellent. Tell me that it, like, helicopters around by having its head yeah. upside down and just absolutely <laughs> yeah, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, the, head, the head stays right way up yeah oh, okay, okay. Yeah, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well that would look silly if it was upside down oh uh, yeah yeah that does would that mean, just be does ridiculous that mean it's both it's both it, it can fly and it's also aquatic no it can only fly it can only fly it can't <laughs> no, go out it, it, it will soar out in the water it can no longer swim it can no longer swim only weakness is water if a single piece drop of water hits it it will die it can spray ink. <laughs> ink, importantly, not water. Not water. No, it's ink. Obviously. It's ink. I also have an expensive hobby that I can't seem to pay off, but always comes in handy. Ah. So I think I spend a lot of time in, like, my weird cabin. I've set up, like, not quite a radio, but, like, I do record audio of myself and uh i have like maybe two listeners right because you know who the fuck else would have a radio Uh, i have the two listeners because i built them the radios so is this like a like a sending stone network yeah of like three stones yeah (laughs) (laughs) my barracuda gets it sometimes actually it's really good you can save the audio and listen to it later you save it in these little, like, uh, the, these enchanted, the little pouches that they use to, to keep seeds in. I think these ones used to be, like, those milkweed ones, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so, like, you just kind of cast the words into this, this pod, and then yeah. you can pull them back out again. Yeah. I think it actually is a seed pouch, and if you have the stone, you, you open the stone's mouth, and you put a seed in it, and then it eats the seed, and then re- oh. like regurgitates the audio. <laughs> How does that sound, Lex? I'm going to just establish my Barracuda go sometimes pick up, picks up the broadcast. Oh, uh-huh, for, sure, good, for sure, for yeah. sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, at that point, just take the st- seed and shove it in your ear, and then you can just hear the audio that way. I... They can't hear you. Their ear pods are in. Uh, <laughs> what's your crafter's name? Puddles McGee. We've got Bell and Puddles. Puddles McGee. 
Wow. Puddles, what project are you working on that you just can't get right? So all this moss, I want to turn it into a... The suspense is killing me. I mean, I was trying to think of something before I got to the end of the sentence, and it didn't work. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> So you've got um, a project related to moss? Yeah, I'm going to do something with that moss. <laughs> Is the um, project you have a bunch of moss? No, sorry, you don't mold, know what to do it's with mold. it? Sorry, oh, it's mold. Sorry, I have mold. mold. What uh, is it silly me? Is what the project you're trying that you to... have a bunch of mold and you don't what know what to do What if you're trying to, to breed it? mold that eats sludge? Mm. Ooh. I mean, that sounds like an actually good project. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Better than anything I was about to say. <laughs> <laughs> Who are you trying to impress? The local bar and grill has a poetry club, and they wouldn't let me in. Oh. That's fucked up. Yeah. You've been re workshopping your poetry? No, I don't. I've never written a single poem in my life. I just oh. wanted it on, on, a, on a principle. <laughs> I just, wanted to, be, I just okay. wanted to be included. Okay. They said I have to write poetry to be in the, the poem club. So That's like, messed up. Up. And then finally, Sorry, it's pumped who, up. Who's your hookup when you can't get what you need? Oh, that's my guy, Jarlos. Jarlos. You could also Jarlos. say one of our characters. Yeah. I mean, do what, yeah. you want to be named Jarlos? <laughs> <laughs> the name Jarlos is an unmovable anchor in the setting. Understood. That's a fixed point. You all can work around <laughs> the word Jarlos. Listen, everybody knows Jarlos. Jarlos got what you need. Jarlos, that's my Jarlos boy. took me in when I started talking about all the ghosts. <laughs> oh, no. We all love Jarlos. <laughs> okay, great. I'm writing down I don't, Jarlos. but I'm built different. <laughs> yeah, old, 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 man, old man Jarlos. He's been around. He's seen some things. He hasn't been quite the same since he came back from the war. Mm hmm we don't know what war he's talking about. Haven't been to war. Actually, the nation's never been to war. Yeah, we have no idea what he means. But, but he just hasn't been the same since. Old man Jarlos. Love that guy. Old man he likes knitting. Good for him. It's soothing. Yeah. He hates multis. Keeps the hands steady. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. We've got puddles and old man Jarlos. <laughs> Sad, you Emily? said absurdity. Or That's old true. man Jarlos is actually the rat. You. <laughs> <laughs> no, my my rat is young. Is young man Jarlos. <laughs> no, because he was a formative hey, young Jarlos. Man. Yeah. <gasps> no, they're JJ Jarlos Jr. <gasps> JJ, oh. no, what is oh, he? JJ the number. rat. J Jonah Jarlos. <laughs> J Jonah Jarlos. <laughs> oh no. Sad, Emily, which one of you would like to go? Yes, I'm going to be playing the Amphibious. You are no longer human. You have managed to change and enhance your body to make you resemble aquatic life. Tentacles, gills, fins, all of these, or things completely different, you have managed to obtain. You have transcended the human shape to be your own body. Getting there was the hardest part, but you're not the only one. You had others to look to who came before you. They taught you a deep connection with the water and all its forms. Uh, this character's name is Bivalve. Bivalve. Yeah. Bivalve's look is stiff, but also kind of weirdly smooth. And there's like kind of a, a, a strange semi-sheen sometimes off of their skin. Their clothes are a cast-off blouse and an ill-fitting trousers just like stuff that they've scrounged up that they wear and then in terms of things that i have uh, i have a hard brittle exterior openings in either side of my neck and poison in my veins and then i also have a daily ritual that helps me maintain my form and that is that uh, bivalve will just walk into the lake and hang out underwater for a couple of hours and then come back out looking refreshed. I don't know why you said, I thought you were just going to say they scream. I have no idea why. That's... <laughs> Ooh, we might start moving into that for some of this other stuff. But yeah. I 
Hell yeah. That's the vital stats on bivalve. Yeah. All right, bivalve. What was the thing that finally made you try to transform yourself? I think it was ultimately the, the, the overwhelming sense of hopelessness. The knowledge that the work that they were doing and the work that their parents had done, and if they were to have kids, the work that they would do, it, it is slowly killing all of us. And so one day they just went into the caldera, went into the lake, and a small voice kind of appeared to them and said, do you want to live? And they said, no, not like this. And they said, well, good. Open your mouth. And Bivalve said, open my mouth and drink. And the spirit said, no, open your mouth and breathe. And so they pulled in all of this polluted water from the lake and they came out just different. Zan over here taking this as serious as a car crash. <laughs> God damn. Open your mouth and breathe. What the? Holy shit. <laughs> Larry, let's see if you've got another one. Yeah. Do you keep in contact with others like you and how? Do you got, got something you want to put on there, Lex? No. When, <laughs> when, <laughs> when you said you heard a voice, I don't know why the phrase, you ever dance with the devil in the pale moonlight came to mind. I don't oh. know why. I don't know why. That was the energy I was going for. That's such a good, like, meaningless line. My first thought was when I, we're, we're just doing this now, apparently. My first thought <laughs> was when you were like, do you want to live? And you were like, no. And then it's like, I don't want to live like okay, this. Bye. My first thought was like, do you want to live deliciously? Fish <laughs> <or> delicious? <laughs> <laughs> With some butter and lemon. <laughs> oh, yum, yum, yum. Give me the fish. Give me the fish. <laughs> also this game is teaching me while i thought i was maybe the weird one i think rob has me beat a little maybe rob's definitely in a way weirder mood yeah yeah <laughs> rob's a weirder person than me I i've think. been dealing with a lot of stress and i needed an outlet I, hey, I'm finding you know, out. we love that here hey guys mm -hmm. hey listeners therapy is important mm-hmm and if you can't get therapy, walk into the caldera and become something else. Yeah. Just become fish. <laughs> become fish. Also, don't listen to me. That was not a helpful thing I said. <laughs> hey, you know, it happens. <laughs> you need to learn some, some lost knowledge. Eat a fish about it. Need to, <laughs> need a change in your life. Be a fish about it. This is definitely, like, it. I know this is supposed to be the wandering bridge arc, but this is definitely the fish arc. This is the fish arc. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh -huh. like, this has become the fish arc. Everything coming back around to the damn fish. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Okay. Turn the damn frog skate. Bivalve, do you keep in contact with others like you, and how? Yes and no. I recognize other people that have taken on the water in the same way that I have, but we don't necessarily uh, associate or talk much because that might be dangerous. Now, do I keep in contact with the other mussels that live in the, that live in the lake and in the tributaries and, and help to filter out even just a little bit of the water? Oh yeah, that's, that's who my family is now. And when I go down there to, to breathe, to take in some of the water and, and put out something fresh, we chat about things, have our little muscle conversations at the gym yep <laughs> under the water who was the first person who made you realize you could be like this might I suggest Jarlos <laughs> <laughs> it all comes back to Jarlos it all comes back to Jarlos what if old man Jarlos is also, also amphibious I think Bivalve was hanging out with puddles and we stopped by old man Jarlos. And at one point, like, uh, Puddles had gone out to, to go, had, like, stepped away for a minute for something. And when, you know, old man Jarlos was like, hey, like, and pointed to the sides of his neck and says, you know, I think it suits you. And that was, like, the extent of the conversation. But he gave this look that was so just like intense and it's just like oh wait no i can i don't just have to like cope with this i can do more 
And that's when I really started exploring what the new body can do. Oh man, Charlos is just such a powerful and important. <laughs> we call him Charlos. Honestly, the name's growing on me. It is legit growing on me. <laughs> it really, I, I'm, I'm starting to feel it now. Emily, what is your playbook? I have the storybook. The old stories of the great oceans, the wild lakes, the dangerous deaths and such are considered lost to almost everyone. But not to you. These stories have been passed down to you, whether by community, family, or happenstance. Some say that your stories are nothing but folk tales, and some may be, but that doesn't make them untrue. Now is the time to share those stories and make everyone remember. Yes. Yeah. My name is Rowan. We all got the assignment and went with some very gay names. Uh, for looks, I just I just decided to go with the, all the things that are available. So for looks, I went with friendly and fatigued. Which tracks? And what's your character? <laughs> also friendly and fatigued. <laughs> fatigued and friendly is a, is a go-to there. Clothes, I can never pass up a worn lucky jacket. Yeah. I need a cool jacket. I need a coat. Some sort of nice-looking leathery thing. For my choose three, I have an important tattoo, a notebook full of my handwriting, and an impulse to overshare. Outstanding. I also have a relic that reminds me of a story I will never tell. What's the relic? Don't tell me the story. M my go-to for, for random trinkets and such tends to be jewelry, so it's probably a lucky necklace of sorts. What is one weird thing about the necklace? It changes color. Based on? You don't know. Ah! Let's get your prompts. Are you ready? Rowan, how did you learn the stories? Oh, you know me. I just, I seem to talk to anybody that I run into. And the better part that people realize is not only do I talk to them a lot, I listen to what they have to say. So I've just gone around talking to everyone that I find all over the village. I tend to hang around in like local spots and dives anyway, because they just feel nicer. And eventually... You, you talk to the older folks, and they remember more, and then you start to talk to people who you realize aren't quite the same as everyone else. They're a little amphibious, one might say, and they can tell you stories that they heard from the creatures in the water themselves, who remember the old tales of the waters a lot better than, than a lot of people seem to do. Of course, you try and tell people those stories and nobody believes you. That's great. How do you keep the stories alive? Oh, I just keep talking <laughs> and talking and talking. Like, I, I have it all written down. So I'm like, hey, can I, can, I, can, can I read you this little thing that I wrote? Okay. I get the poetry club. And <laughs> <gasps> Oh, no, this isn't one of the prompt questions, but are you in the poetry club? Oh, yeah, I'm in the poetry club. Oh, as, as soon as he said poetry club, I was like, I'm in the poetry club. Did you found it? Co-found. And you won't let Puddles in? How dare you? Hey, we need a quorum. I'm not the only voice here. We are a group as a society. <laughs> we are trying to fight against the, the, the corporate order of, hey, 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 you must buy these trinkets to get... No. It's fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta fight the system from the inside. I'm doing what I can. But also, it does state... Like, like you could probably come, come to like re the readings that we do. You know, you sit in on the readings and and what and all of that. But until you write your own poetry, you can't actually be in the club. I can't go. It be my like block. we're not, we're not taking unsolicited feedback. Like we're we're here to. It, it's a group activity. As for your your co-founder, it's not Jarlos. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Jarlos would be too inclusive. Like we have it's Jarlos' nephew. Bit. Oh, it's Jarlos's nephew. Jarlos. They're, they're not sure. They're not sure if it's like just a straight up nephew, or if it's like a great nephew. They're related somehow, or like an adopted nephew, or something. Yeah. I feel like Jarlos refers to every relative his age as brother and sister, and every relative younger than him as niece and nephew, or whatever else. 
I think the name's something like Narlos or something. Just like Narlo. F.U. Jarlos. <laughs> oh, Narlo. Since he was adopted, he probably just has a normal name like Paul. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. We'll, 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 we'll figure out his name later. Yeah. His, no, his name is Paul, but he keeps trying to get people to call him Jal because he wants to feel like part of uh-huh. the... Of part the of the family, family but it he just, just doesn't, doesn't understand on. how the family name works. Yeah, yeah. I feel like Paul is like deeply uncool. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. He's, he's the uncool. he's the least Jarlos man alive. Yeah, this is a man who has co-founded a poetry society and is a real stickler for the rules of uh-huh. that poetry society. You don't need to tell us he's not cool. Paul has like chronic cop brain. <laughs> oh, gross! I hate Paul. Paul's a bastards. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, we do have one more question for Rowan. Rowan, what is your favorite story to tell? Oh man, my favorite story to tell. I think my favorite story to tell is probably how the caldera came to be. Like how it's full of water, the origin of the lake. Do you want to tell us now, or do you want to do you want to just string that out as we play? We'll find it. We know it's there. I'm with you. Who wants to be my prompt master so that I'm not like asking? Benjamin, what playbook are you? What even are you? Oh, God. What even am I? I'm playing the companion. Like zoinks. Two legs are overrated. You know what's cool? Four legs or six or maybe none. You're not human. Literally. Plenty of other animals have evolved to be natural fishers, and some of them like to hang out with humans. You're the plucky pet, the cartoonish comedic relief, or the solemn reminder that humans aren't the only ones impacted by climate change. Additionally, I am playing my own dog. I am playing Mildred, the Basset Hound. And you'll never guess whose Basset Hound I am. <laughs> That's right. I am Mildred, Jarlos's Basset Hound. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> Benjamin. What are Mildred's two talents? Let's see here. My look is furry and frenetic, with, and I've got big, long ears. Okay. Yes. I have human language. Now, it's not that I can talk. Okay. It's that I can understand human language exceedingly well, and my eyes are so expressive that you can basically figure out what my reply is. We can communicate. But moreover... Just because I can understand human language doesn't mean I'm obedient. In fact, Basset Hounds are famously stubborn. And most of the time, I couldn't give a shit less what you want, unless there's something in it for me. That is to say, treats. <laughs> if we're wishing, Rarlos. And then my other talent is special senses. I have the best sniffer on the caldera. I've got a top-notch nose. And I can't swim. Can't swim for shit. Cannot do that. Sink like a stone. It's kind of a liability. But I can literally smell types of fish. When I'm sitting on a boat, you can be like, hey, where can we go fish for grouper today? And I'll like walk, like spin around a little bit and then like point in the direction. Like that's how precise my nose is. Incredible. And then I have three adorable eyes. (laughs) You have three eyes? No, yeah, I choose. I uh, uh, I take adorable eyes three times. Yeah, yeah. No, I, <laughs> I have adorable eyes, an ear for secrets, and plucky optimism. You can tell me a secret by lifting my ear, <laughs> my big floppy ear. You can lift it up and tell me a secret, and I will keep. I will keep it there forever. Exceedingly trustworthy with secrets. I also have the ability to tell if someone is worthy of my trust by smelling them. That is something Mildred has. I'm... <laughs> I, I was reading this. I'm like, oh, my God, I can play my dog. I... <laughs> so, um, Mildred, why did the gang bring you into their home? I am Jarlos's basset hound. I am Jarlos's dog. But, like, I am not restrained by Jarlos whatsoever. So people who hang out with Jarlos a lot, every so often, I just go and follow them on wacky adventures. And everyone knows, if Jarlos's hound is with you, you don't say no to Jarlos's hound. One, she's, stu- she's too stubborn, so she's, she's going to come with you anyway. 
And two, that sniffer's too good. Yeah, true. I mean, Jarlis is always saying that ownership is theft, so... Yeah. Makes sense. Jarlis is based as fuck. Mildred, what can you see that others can't? Well, you can already see... Yeah. Well, only ghosts of fish so far. Right. Little scent lines wafting off of pies. <laughs> no, I don't think I'm going to do that. Instead, I think I have psychometry. I think if I smell an object, I can actually get visions of, like, the last time it was used. Okay. Huh. Oh, yeah. The very good nose. It is incredibly powerful, this nose. A great, great nose. And, and Mildred, how does everyone treat you differently? I am Jarlos's dog, and everyone knows Jarlos's base. Everyone loves Jarlos. Mm -hmm. And so there is kind of a weird, like, local celebrity effect. Like, I'm kind of, like, especially in town, but even in the actual city of Tarsig, people know who Mildred is. And so people are always, like, stopping to, like, give me treats and stuff. And so, yeah, I know. It, Emily's over here smiling because they know exactly. It's this is exactly Mildred. What, the, we, every time we walk this dog around, everyone's like, oh, my God, it's Mildred. Can I pet Mildred? So that's, like, people, this, I am, I am a known entity. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I think maybe also I must have gotten my, my, my face on some kind of dumb advertising thing. Even though I am free range and owned by the single most based person in history. So Jarlos is objectively based. So whatever he says is the most based thing. But somehow I got my face slapped on an advertisement for something stupid and I'm famous for that. What, what am I the mascot of? The local factory. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> the prestidigitation devices, the little, like, cleanup devices, it's, it's Mildred's face on it. Go with me on this. Uh, Mildred's munitions. <laughs> Mild oh, no. Oh, no. I am the friendly face of an explosives factory. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my God. And the, the, the logo that they put on their painted wood signs and, and stuff when you go into the munitions place, is me, but I'm wearing, like, a half helm. And it just says, I'm the bomb. <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> and there's, like, and there's, like, dumb, and there's, like, dumb, like, propaganda-style posters of me, and, like, the, fa like, you can buy them, but they'll be in the factories where it'll be, like, me with, like, stuff around my ears, and it says, make sure to cover your ears while there's an explosion <laughs> going off in the background, yeah. and, like, all this other dumb shit. It's like a weird hard hat that extends down to the yeah. long ears. Yeah. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> hmm. I think that Jarlos, like, rescued you from the PR campaign, but, like, they still have the rights and, and still use mm -hmm. them. Or maybe they don't even have the rights and use it anyway. doesn't matter if they I have mean, the rights. I mean, maybe that's literally how Jarlos got you, like, broke you out. <laughs> Honestly, I think that would be the most based thing possible, and we all know Jarlos does the most based thing. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I think Jarlos rescued me. You're less Jarlos' dog and more Jarlos' roommate. <laughs> oh, yeah. We're both. Yeah. No, you're Jarlos' son. Paul is <laughs> Paul was actually adopted by Mildred, not Jarlos. True. Uh, oh, no. I found <laughs> Paul. That's why, that's why Jarlos keeps calling Paul his nephew. Paul <laughs> circle. And Paul hasn't put it together yet. And it's just like this is, this, get is a, it. this is this is this is a distancing thing. I don't understand. So I think what we're gonna do is we're just gonna keep yes anding this thing. Uh so whoever takes like the first character introduction is gonna start establishing part of the heist, and we're just gonna keep elaborating on it with character introductions. All right. So, Mildred's munitions, obviously, they're also just sent out because weapons are profitable. But there's a thing called blast fishing, where you just blow up the water to fish. So, what's the fastest way for terrible, corrupt industrialists to fish out of the caldera? Mildred's munitions, clearly. So we see 
like this section of gantry and just this like giant cartoon like land like sea mine with just a happy Mazadown face <laughs> painted across it just boof, boof, just explodes out of the caldera and just like hundreds of dead fish flying into the air. Along with those fish flying into the air, we see one larger body that comes rocketing up out of the water. That body arcs. I think even like a jet of water shoots out from one of the ports on Bivalve's neck, and it changes their trajectory as they're launched over the seawall, and they land and roll, come up behind a couple of crates inside the wall. They look around to see if there's anybody, if anybody saw them, uh, and then they turn and their body kind of convulses a little bit almost like they're they're going to retch and then out of their mouth pops a pearl they take the pearl and they put it into the wall and then just like with a bare fist knock it and it sinks in just a little bit and then with a hiss the pearl bursts and begins to expand out this hole in the wall who's standing on the other side as this this hole gets opened is it is everybody on the other side i mildred am on the other side the pearl is actually at like knee height Mm -hmm. and uh it expands only to about a foot wide the hole and it's still about eight inches up and so i like put my two big paws on it and i kind of like rock myself up and then clumsily fall through the hole and then i just start trundling through the area and there's people working and they're like, oh, hi, Mildred. Oh, hey, Mildred. Hey, what's going on? And I'm like, <laughs> and, I, and then nose back down, trundle, 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 trundle. And then I get to a door that says uh, restricted access by penalty of law. And I'm going to invoke a rule or I'm going to invoke one of my moves, which is so when Mildred breaks the law, she whines until she gets what she wants anyway. And so Mildred, <laughs> <laughs> Mildred hey. sits down outside of this restricted access door and just starts making little dog whines. And then eventually someone comes by and is like, Hey, you can't, you can't go in there, buddy. And I'm like, ah, 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 ah. <laughs> and I'm like scratching at it. And then, finally, you're fine. I, <laughs> and then finally the guy is just like, okay, fine. Just this once, but don't get any trouble. And then he opens the door and I slip on through back to trundling sniff, 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 sniff. sniff. And I'm like sniffing the air and I'm like checking things. And then finally I find there's like a lever. And I I get, I kind of scratch my way up and get it in my teeth. And then above the lever, you see a sign that says emergency release, do not touch. And I put my full weight on it and bring it down and it opens up uh, two giant gantry doors and water starts to sort of spill out of this spillway back into the caldera. Uh, causing a great deal of chaos. And we cut to red flashing magical screen being like error, like some kind of like security station. Like clearly somebody's supposed to know that this is going on. Can you prove to me that you have a soul? Because no. all I'm saying is I've seen a bunch of fish souls, but not any uh-uh. human souls. So yeah. that's leading me to think that possibly fish are cosmologically more important than us Uh which has a lot of weird implications Uh and and so Uh i just in fact here's the thing if you could see my barracuda they're really insistent that it's important that we don't Mm. hunt to extinction on now i think it might be a bit of a personal and and, and, and like (laughs) and and then afterwards we get the like title card of like this was like 10 minutes prior (laughs) <laughs> uh, to, to the to, to the lever being pulled as as Bell is just like thoroughly ruining some guards day. Ten like you get the ten minutes later and then it like you continue on when the alarm goes off. The other guy's so like, so that's why I feel like honestly, if if we were being realistic, <laughs> I feel like grass is still not that ethical to eat in a lot of ways. You know, it's hey, whoa, 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 hold up, hold up, wait, 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 wait. Yeah. You hear that? Do you, do you... Oh yeah, sorry, that's my rat. <laughs> and uh you see JJ has finished chewing through a wire and the screen goes black. The screen's gone black. 
Weird, huh? Anyway, so what goes? <laughs> what is your role in this heist, Rowan? I mean, my my main thing is I'm a talker, but he's got the talking down. I, I'm I'm good there. Got one specific <laughs> guard. You're the distraction to make to get those down. I'm gonna be talking to anybody we run into trying to get in these newly opened doors. Who are you talking to? What's the scene? What's the plan here? Well, Mildred just so helpfully opened these giant gates in a panic and caused panic. So, sure, there's going to be people maybe coming out, but there could also be people coming in. And here's the thing. I listen and I write. I write stories. And this kind of seems like breaking news in the happening. And wouldn't you know it that the local school paper is going to have a field day with this. I'm going to have so much fun. Hey, could I talk to you real quick? Can I can can I can I tell you a story? <laughs> and that is what I would do because, in the meantime, bivalve and puddles <laughs> slip in if they would like, or whoever would like to slip in while I've got people distracted here. Yeah, I wonder if you like draw a crowd while you're like sort of playing like stand up journalist. Because <laughs> one of my things is when I share a story, everyone stops to listen. Oh, Ooh, all right. right. So. So what story do you tell about this, uh, this door opening up? Like, how are you drawing a crowd? Well, you see, I remember hearing about back in the day when this factory was new. Back when they had a big security breach. They, it, it, was, it was new days. They were still opening things up and some things went, it's again, a bunch of materials went missing that were never recovered. Like, they scoured everywhere in the Calderia. Like, what? I didn't know that they had a security breach here. Hey, yeah, what were the, the materials? Yeah, what were the materials that got stolen? It was like the, the, the special lining that they use for the trinkets to keep the magic in so it oh, doesn't no, escape. So like so like a, it's oh, it's geez, used to, to like to enclose oh, magic right. in place. Yeah, yeah it's important. absolutely important. Like literally mm-hmm. you can't make anything without them. There was but a shortage for a while. That's why it delayed the opening of the factory. Like oh, especially delayed? when it comes to especially when it comes to magical munitions, things that go boom, you want to be able to contain that where it mm. needs to be and it only really gets out when you want it to. Oh yeah. Oh boy, I could tell you some stories about management all over town, but oh, especially you've got stories this about place management? And the, oh, Do I have stories about management? Oh golly, you have no idea. I have heard nothing but good things about the management here. This is nonsense. Oh, you want the management? <laughs> you stories about, about management. You you prove it. Let me guess. Supervisor, right? Supervisor, second class. Gonna make it to first class one of these days. No, you ain't, Randy. Yeah, I can see you kissing ass to get there. <laughs> so yeah, I'm just gonna, I just draw everybody in. And, and just, <laughs> anytime they say something, I know a story about that. Just a bunch of people standing next to the door arguing. And I need this to be on record that Lex uh-huh. is wearing exceedingly cool fucking glasses right now. Uh-huh. Like, uh, 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 anime cool. Unbelievably uh-huh. good glasses. Amidst the distraction, the camera pans to showing a fishing line come down from above <laughs> and attach itself to something on one of the, on one of the employee's belts. And, it, and as it pulls away, some kind of device with a big red button on it gets reeled up into the rafters. And then there's me, covered in mold and lots <laughs> of pockets. And I push the button. My move being, when I go fishing... I always get something with a big red button on it. <laughs> <laughs> yes! Uh, yes! Uh. Is, that, is that where we cut? Like, you have the button in your hand and you press it, and then, yeah. and then it's like, title Spring card, dark. this is a game know. about fishing. Yeah. <laughs> yes! <laughs> wait, wait, Lex, do you have a one-liner? I feel like, I feel like we're, we're needing a one-liner. We really need a one-liner here. Go fish. thank you for listening to patchwork if you're here because you're hooked on game woven and wanted more thank you if you're here because it caught your eye but you're not familiar with game woven hop on over to at game woven on twitter find us on world anvil or check out the game woven podcast where we have tons more content just like this a special thank you to the regulars from our cast zad rob lex and Emily, and to our fearless editor, Bree, who was not present for the recording, but trimmed it down real nice for us. Thanks.